I found 11 of the highest paying remote jobs and I'm gonna be presenting them for your viewing pleasure. And I did all the research for you. I'm gonna tell you how much they make. I'm gonna give you examples of where you can get hired for these jobs, etc. So all you have to do is sit back, relax, gently tap that like button, and let's get into it with number one on the list, which is going to be a fantasy football analyst. So this is not gonna be like the highest paying job on the list, and it's also not gonna be one of the better ones on the list, but I thought I would include it here because it's a really fun one, and there's actually a decent amount of positions open for this. So in case you didn't know, fantasy football is basically where you predict which players in American football are going to perform the best. And this isn't just based on how good the players are, but it's also based on their circumstances as well. So there might be a really good player on a really bad team, and that could cause them to have really good stats, or inversely, it could also cause them to have bad stats as well. And there is an entire industry around fantasy football. And they also do this for other sports like basketball, soccer, baseball, etc. as well. But fantasy football alone is a multi-billion dollar industry. And as a fantasy football analyst, you get to combine your love for the game with your analytical skills, all while working remotely and enjoying the flexibility of being able to manage your schedule. And a fun fact here is the first fantasy football league was actually started in 1962 by a group of Oakland Raiders Raider fans where they had their own draft and everything. And this is such a sought after job that in 2009, Matthew Barry, known as the talented Mr. Roto, left his job as a Hollywood screenwriter to become a full-time fantasy football analyst. Now, if you get employed as a fantasy football analyst, the average salary is gonna be about $60,000 a year. But you can make much, much more than this if you go off on your own and start your own blog or you start your own YouTube channel. So some of the skills you would need for this position are going to be a strong knowledge of football, of course, statistical analysis skills, understanding of fantasy football strategies, attention to detail, ability to interpret data, effective communication skills, and a passion for the game. And a great way to get started with this is actually just to go ahead and start your own YouTube channel or blog. And that way you can just use it as a portfolio. There's definitely no college degree for becoming a fantasy football analyst, at least I hope there isn't. And so basically the best way to show that you have these skills is to just start making your own content. So overall, I'm going to give this one a six out of 10 opportunity score. That's going to be the lowest on the entire list, but I thought I would just include it because I thought it was a really cool one. The next on the list is a super legit career where you can make hundreds of thousands of dollars, multiple hundreds of thousands, and that is going to be a data architect. And a data architect is responsible for housing an organization's data. They need to make sure that it's safe, secure, but it's also easily accessible. And this position is crucial for helping organizations harness the power of their data. And this helps them make informed business decisions decisions and optimize their processes. And basically any career that is data related is super hot, super in demand and very high paying right now. And data architects make about $166,000 a year. So some of the skills you would need to get into this are strong analytical skills, expertise in data management systems, proficiency in data modeling and design, and the ability to communicate and collaborate effectively with cross-functional teams. Now there's basically two different ways of getting into positions like this. The first way is to get a computer science or a statistics degree, and you can get it either at the bachelor's or the master's level. And then you'd probably start off at a lower level data related position and you'd work your way up to data architect. The second way, the way where you don't actually have to get a degree is to get into a data analyst position and then just start learning from there. Start getting different certifications like the CDMP or the TOGAF certifications. And then you can eventually work your way into the position within a few years. The more traditional way is, of course, getting a college degree, but the easier and more cost-effective way is probably starting off as a data analyst. And a great way to get started as a data analyst is to take the Google Data Analyst Professional Certificate. This is a certificate that I reviewed on my channel. I think it's excellent. It's actually one of the better Google certificates, and I think all of them are pretty good. And I will make sure to put it down in the description as well as the pinned comment below if you want to check it out. But these certificates are great because you can finish them in a few months. You get access to a private job board where hundreds of companies are hiring and they're only hiring people who have these certificates. It also allows you to build a portfolio while you're learning data analytics. So it's active learning. It's something you can put on your resume, your portfolio and your LinkedIn that will really stand out. And it's only about $39 per month, depending on where you live. It's actually kind of location dependent. In some locations, it's going to be more expensive. In some locations, it's uh, cheaper, uh, according to people who have commented below my videos. And again, you can check just by clicking the link down below. But in terms of 
value, it is pretty much as good as it gets. There have been many people who commented on my channel who said they were able to actually get a job with these certificates. Now, I am an affiliate partner of Coursera, full disclosure, but I was recommending them before they ever gave me an affiliate partnership. In fact, the reason that they reached out to me is because I was recommending them. So definitely check them out. Really love Coursera. I'll put them down in the description as well as the pinned comment below. But overall, I am going to give Data Architect an opportunity score of 9.5 out of 10. Now, the next one on the list is another entry level job that is relatively high paying and it also has a ton of opportunity to make even more money after that. And that is going to be a project coordinator. Now, if you've ever heard of a project manager, a project coordinator is kind of like the project manager's sidekick. And basically, you're going to be overseeing and managing various projects, ensuring their successful execution and delivery. And the role of project coordinator can be traced back to ancient civilizations such as ancient Egypt, where construction of monumental structures required meticulous attention to detail and planning. Now, as a project coordinator, you'll be making about $56,000 a year. So some of the skills you might need for this position are going to be strong organizational skills, excellent communication skills and leadership abilities, attention to detail, the ability to multitask. And prior experience at something is often preferred. You don't necessarily have to be a project coordinator, of course, but it is preferred. But there are also entry level positions that are available with no experience required. And yeah, overall, I'm going to give it a nine out of 10 opportunity score. The next one on the list is going to be a pretty good one. I'd say it's kind of underrated, and that's going to be an inventory analyst. Now, this is a position where you'll often be working for an e-commerce company or some other company that basically has a ton of logistics issues. So anybody who understands e-commerce and sort of like, you know, physical products in general know that logistics is incredibly important. You can't have too much or too little of a product. And basically in this position, you are going to be managing and analyzing inventory levels and making sure that you stay in that perfect zone where you don't have too much or too little. And this is a really good quote about inventory just to kind of show how important this is. Inventory is money sitting around in another form. Now, inventory analysts make about $57,000 a year. And keep in mind, this is an entry level job, so that's really good. So some of the skills you're gonna need for this are a strong attention to detail and also analytical skills. Here are a few opportunities that you can look into. Keep in mind, these probably won't be open if it's like, you know, two weeks after this video is posted, which is why it's important to subscribe and hit the bell notification if you haven't done it already. But overall, I'm gonna give this one an opportunity score of 7.5 out of 10. The next one on the list is going to be a communications specialist. And this is very similar to a PR position, which is public relations. So basically you're gonna be crafting compelling messages, managing public relations, and driving effective communication strategies for your organization. So understanding things like public relations and optics and sort of you know your overall general brand message is incredibly important in this position. So you might spend a lot of time kind of overseeing and editing press releases or your company company's newsletter or different advertisement that might go out. And a communication specialist makes about $57,000 a year. And keep in mind, this is a relatively entry level job. Some of the skills you might need for this are going to be strong written and verbal communication skills, strategic thinking, creativity, and the ability to adapt to various audiences and platforms. Here are some opportunities that you can look into. And overall, I'm going to give this one an opportunity score of eight out of 10. The next one on the list is going to be in the insurance industry, and that's going to be a public adjuster. And in this position, you're going to be advocating on behalf of policy holders. So you're actually going to be representing the little guy in most cases. So you might be helping them in the process of submitting and filing an insurance claim so you can ensure that they receive fair compensation for whatever their loss was. Now, as a public adjuster, you'd make about $68,000 a year. And the insurance industry is very well known for accepting people at the entry level without any skills or previous experience. But with that being said, strong negotiation skills are a must. And you also want to have in-depth knowledge of the insurance industry and how insurance policies work as well. And overall, I'm going to give this one an eight out of 10 opportunity score. The next one on the list is going to be an LMSE learning administrator. And that stands for learning management systems or e-learning administrator. And this is basically where you make the e-learning experience as smooth and fruitful as possible. And in this position, you'd make about $68,000 a year. And keep in mind, this is another one where you can get hired without a college degree or any previous experience because you can basically just make your own experience. And some of the skills you'd want to have for this one are strong technical skills, knowledge of instructional design principles, attention to detail, problem solving skills, and effective communication. And overall, I'm going to give this one an opportunity score of 8.5 out of 10. The next one on the list is going to be 
a technical writer. And this is basically where you're going to be writing things like instructional manuals for different products. And this is kind of like being a translator between technology and common language. And there's a really good quote I like about this one. The goal of a technical writer is to transform the complex into the comprehensible. And technical writing actually dates back to ancient civilizations such as ancient Egypt, where detailed instructions for things like construction or rituals were documented on papyrus scrolls. Now, this is one of the highest paying writing jobs. You make about $69,000 a year, and it is a job that you can get at the entry level. But with that being said, it's probably not the type of job that most writers would want to get because it's not gonna be all that creative. But some of the skills you're gonna need for this one are, of course, very strong writing skills, the ability to simplify complex ideas, attention to detail, research proficiency, technical aptitude, and the capacity to work independently. So overall, I'm gonna give this one an eight out of 10 opportunity score. The next one on the list is going to be an inside sales representative. Now, this is kind of like a blanket career. There's a bunch of different careers that are very similar to this, and they all have like slightly different names. For instance, in technology, this might be called an account executive. It would be essentially the same job, but this is basically a sales job where you excel in building relationships. And typically this is going to be in B2B or business to business sales. That means you're going to be building relationships with people who are the decision makers in other businesses. And you're going to focus more on building relationships with them and then understanding their needs and seeing if your product can actually help them. In some cases, if your product can't help them, you might communicate with your internal team, tell them that you're having a lot of businesses out there that are having this same problem, and they might even create another product to help those businesses. And inside sales reps make about $70,000 a year. And again, this is a job that you can get at the entry level. So some of the skills you might need for this one are, of course, strong communication skills and persuasion skills, the ability to build relationships, sales acumen, and very importantly, resilience. You do have to have thick skin because you are going to get rejected quite a bit. But overall, I'm going to give this an opportunity score of nine out of 10. I absolutely love sales jobs. I had a sales job. In fact, I've had several of them, and they were probably my favorite jobs that I've ever had. I cannot think of a single person that regretted getting a sales job. It's such a good character building experience, and it'll help you out no matter what path you go in your life. The next one on the list is going to be a computer scientist. So I think everybody knows I'm going to rank this one relatively high. And basically, you're going to be studying algorithms, designing software systems, and solving complex computational problems. So you're basically going to be an expert in programming, logic, and problem solving. And a lot of jobs out there for this position are remote. And computer scientists make about $116,000 a year. Now, unlike a lot of the other jobs on this list, this one you typically do need to have like a master's or a bachelor's at bare minimum to get into it. And the masters or the bachelors would be in computer science most likely. And some of the skills or characteristics you might need for this position are of course, strong problem solving skills, proficiency in programming languages like Java, Python, C++, et cetera, logical thinking, attention to detail, and a continuous learning mindset. And overall, I'll give this one an opportunity score of nine out of 10. Now, one that you can get into without a degree that's very similar is going to be a back end and engineer. And they're basically responsible for building and maintaining the server side of websites and applications. So the side that you never see as a consumer, you can contrast that to a front end engineer where they would be responsible for building out the things that you actually see. For instance, if you like this YouTube video, and then the button turns blue, that's something that you would actually see. And that was designed by a front end engineer, the back end engineer would be the one who sees that, hey, a bunch of people are liking this video, maybe it's a good one, we'll promote it to a bunch of other people in the algorithm and see how it does. Now it is considered to be more prestigious and it's also considered to be a little harder to be a back end engineer versus a front end engineer. So a lot of people will actually start off as a front end engineer and then they'll move into a back end role. But back end engineers make about $133,000 a year. Many of them do have college degrees. A lot of the time they're unrelated. Some of them also have computer science degrees, of course, but a lot of people are able to get into this and become back end engineers eventually, probably not with their first job, but eventually without a college degree. And they can do this through self-learning, certificates, certifications, and online boot camps. And some of the skills that you'd want to have for this are going to be a strong understanding of programming languages such as Python, Java, or Ruby, knowledge of database systems and query languages such as SQL, familiarity with server management and cloud platforms such as AWS or Azure, and the ability to collaborate with front-end developers. So overall, great career. I've kind of talked so much about software development, computer science, etc. on this channel. 
obviously this is a really good one. I think most people know that. I'm gonna give it a 9.5 out of 10 opportunity score. By the way, if you haven't done it already and you're interested in Google career certificates, check out my Google certificate tier list where I rank all of the different Google certificates that are offered on Coursera from S tier, which is the best to F tier, which is the worst. And you can check that out by clicking right here.